making some shrimp in the pressure cooker. This is a super fast way to cook your shrimp if you're gonna do peel and eat shrimp for a buffet or a party service. You know what, we're going and we're doing it smarter, not harder. I'm going to go with a bag, a two pound bag of easy peel shrimp from the grocery store. These are the easy peel kind of shrimp, which means they've already been sliced up the back and they've been deveined so that when it comes time to peel and eat them, that shell slides right off. When you make them in the pressure cooker, they like pretty much fall off in the first place. This is so simple. So I have a two pound bag of peel and eat shrimp. This is the 5160 count. You can get the bigger ones, which are like 36 to 50 count, um, which are a little bit larger. And if you're not familiar when you buy shrimp, if you see these numbers, this means the number of shrimp that you're going to get approximately per pound. So that's a little helpful hint. The smaller the number, the bigger the shrimp. So two pound bag of easy peel shrimp. We're gonna put one cup of water in the bottom of the pressure cooker. I have two lemons that I've wedged up, not even gonna squeeze them. We're just gonna allow these to steam in there and flavor the shrimp. And I have about a tablespoon of seafood seasoning. You can use Old Bay or you can use your own. Today I'm using my Power Pressure Cooker XL. This is a six quart version. I really do like it. The only thing I don't like about it is this vessel is nonstick. Um, so I don't really do a lot in here except like like hard boil eggs and steam things that don't need to be stirred. So we're gonna pop a cup of water in the bottom. Now you will see that I have a plate in the bottom here because I don't have a rack that will fit in here and it didn't come with a rack and it didn't come with a cooking tray. So a plate will do you just fine. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a few lemon wedges in the bottom here. Then I'm gonna pop my bag of shrimp. I'm just gonna dump it right in. That's pretty simple. Those are good size shrimp. They're pretty good size. And I'm gonna pop the rest of these lemons right on the top. I'm also going to just sprinkle the seafood seasoning right over, and that's how hard it is. And maybe you didn't think about cooking your shrimp in the pressure cooker, but this way you can pop it in frozen and it cooks in five minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and you should consult the owner's manual for your particular model of pressure cooker so that you can use the proper setting. Mine actually does have a fish and vegetable setting, which is a steaming option. I'm going to come over here and hit the medium button and I'm gonna increase it to five minutes. That's gonna steam cook the shrimp perfectly. Now, after this comes up to pressure, it's going to steam for five minutes. Then I'm going to quick release the pressure and then I'll come back and I'll show you what the shrimp looks like. All right, we steam these for five minutes on medium and waited for them to finish up and then I quick release the pressure and look at this. If you could smell my kitchen, it smells like a seafood house. And these, because we cook them from frozen straight out of the bag, they're gonna have a lot of water in the vessel. So what happens now? We're gonna go ahead and drain them. If you're gonna be serving these, you want to make sure that you chill them a little bit or let them cool off, then serve them with some delicious cocktail sauce. And we'll be right back and we'll show you what these look like when it's time to serve them. Well, there you have it. Our peel and eat shrimp are all ready to go, steamed, seasoned, cooled off, ready to enjoy. We made some cocktail sauce to go along with this. So this is super easy to do, it's super economical, and it's really, really delicious. Today we're gonna be sharing how I make lobster tail in the pressure cooker. Now you might say, really? You're gonna make that in the pressure cooker? I am. I have made shrimp in the pressure cooker. I've made lots of delicate things and you would be surprised at how easy it is and how quickly they turn out perfect. Lobster tail is no exception and today I'm gonna share with you how I do it. Now I have a Power Pressure XL six quart pressure cooker that I'm gonna be using and I am gonna show you from start to finish how we do this. I went ahead and I got four of these. So we're gonna take our lobster tail along with some lemon and some seafood seasoning. Today I'm using one from a company called Saltopia. My brother gave me a set of them for Christmas and I'm gonna use that today. It's super delicious, it smells amazing. So how do we prep these? So I'm gonna show you how I prep these first. So let's take one of these lobster tails. These um, are very easy to process. We're gonna leave these in the shell when we steam them 
And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my kitchen scissors and I'm just gonna cut down the center um, on the top of the shell. Now I, I know that some people like to split these in half, but you don't have to do that. And then you're gonna turn it over and you're just gonna kind of like crack these little um, divisions. And be careful because sometimes it can be sharp. Then you're gonna gently pull these apart just gently a little bit now this is where I like to stop okay but some people they like to run their finger like along the inside edge here um, and loosen the meat from the shell but this is going to come apart from the shell as it steams so you can make your decision on how you're going to do that and then I'm going to show you how you would present this if you were going to serve this like with a beautiful piece of steak or something you know do a little surf and turf at home we'll do another one Just take your kitchen scissors and then turn it over and kind of smash it until you hear it crack. Now be careful because you see this here, there's like a little spine. You don't want to put your finger in that. You kind of want to go on either side. Otherwise, you're going to bleed. <laughs> I don't want you to bleed. And then just loosely separate. Okay, I'm going to go do these other two and then we'll be back and we'll bring the pressure cooker around and we'll get down to business. First thing we're going to do, because if you're going to pressure cook anything, the first thing you need to do is put water or some sort of liquid in here. So we're going to put a cup of water. You can choose to put a cup of white wine. You can choose to put some beer. It's all up to you. I have one lemon. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to squeeze it in there. I'm also going to put the lemon halves in the basket. So then I'm going to go ahead and put these lobster tails on in here. And you, it doesn't matter if you want to, you know, stack them on top of each other. That works just fine. I did want to mention that one of the reasons that I am cracking the underside of the shell is so these don't curl up as they're cooking. It just makes it a lot easier. Now I have this seafood seasoning and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to sprinkle this on in there. I'm going to put the lid on. Make sure that your steam vent is closed. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to select fish and vegetables. Now I'm going to put this on the, on the food quick, which is gonna give it the lowest amount of pressure for the shortest amount of time because you don't wanna turn your semi-expensive lobster tail into a great big white eraser because nobody is gonna like that. So I'm gonna let this come to pressure I'm going to let it cook until the timer comes down and then I'm going to let it sit for just a couple of minutes before I release the steam on a, you know, a quick release process. And I'll be back when these are ready to come out and I'll show you what they look like. Our lobster tail is finished cooking, so we put it on for two minutes. So I have to wait for it to come up to pressure, which only took a few minutes because when you're talking about cooking it on low pressure for a short period of time, building up enough pressure in there doesn't take long at all. So after it cooked for two minutes, the timer went off, I let it sit for two minutes or thereabouts. And then I came over and I quick released the pressure valve to let all of the steam out of the vessel. And now we're ready to open up and see our lobster tail. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Smells amazing. Our lobster tail is perfectly cooked. And now you can either eat them and plate them and eat them or serve them or whatever, or you can let them cool and chill them, which is what I'm going to do. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plate these up and I'm gonna show you how I would serve them if I was gonna put them nice to, next to a nice filet mignon. We're all ready to serve. Now, if I were gonna serve these lobster tail next to a beautiful piece of steak or filet mignon or grilled chicken or something of that nature, this is how I would serve it. Basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up the, uh, the shell, you're gonna take a fork and gently lift it out but not detach it and then pull it up enough so that you can close the shell up underneath it and then just rest it on top that's how you would get it served to you in a fine restaurant and i did want to mention this particular little lobster tail curled up most likely because i did not crack the bottom enough so that is going to happen but i wanted to show you if you just open it up this is to serve it you're going to open it up just like this and kind of be careful not to break it all the way because I did that with this one here. <laughs> Just take a fork and kind of gently lift that piece of tail meat out of there 
and then you can just kind of squeeze the bottom together the shell and that's how you would serve it just like that isn't it beautiful i mean there is something super luxurious about having lobster to begin with so if you're going to serve this you want to do it just right now i will say that these lobster tail cost seven dollars a piece at my grocery store and this definitely is a treat for us we don't do this hardly ever but when i make lobster this is how i make it in the pressure cooker super easy super fast perfectly done every time and i know you're gonna love it you don't have to worry about steaming them in a vat full of boiling water in a giant pot the lobster tail is going to get the job done in the pressure cooker and i know you're just going to really enjoy it this way We're gonna go over all of the ingredients for our down east shrimp boil, and we are gonna be making this in the pressure cooker. The pressure cooker, believe it or not, is gonna make this super easy, and it's gonna cook in five minutes. Because you know what? Everything that you see here cooks individually at the five minute mark, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this all together, and we're gonna make a delicious North Carolina down east style shrimp boil, and it's very similar to a low country boil, if you're familiar with that, but we're only using shrimp. I got these amazing jumbo shrimp that are fresh caught out of the water off the coast of North Carolina. I've had them on ice in my refrigerator. They did have their, uh, their shells on them, but you know what I did? I took my kitchen shears and I cut through the shell down the back and then I peeled them and I made sure I took that little vein right out of there. And if you're a fan of The Office and Dwight Schrute, you'll know what that is. Two pounds of shrimp, two pounds of mixed uh, Yukon gold and red baby potatoes, one pound of smoked sausage, your choice, four ears of corn that I peeled, scrubbed, and broke in half, one lemon that I have quartered, and well, and cut the quarters in half. And then this is my seafood seasoning that we made in another video. And I just have a little bit here. We may use more, we may not use that much. We'll see. When you use a, a seafood seasoning in a in a boil of sort, some sort, you really do use a copious amount because not all of it's gonna end up on your food. And I have two cups of water here uh, ready to go. So I'll bring over the pressure cooker and we'll build this. All right, first things first, we pour our water in. I do have a little rack in there because I don't really want this stuff sitting down in that water. I just want the water to steam it. Potatoes go in first. Then a little bit of seasoning. Corn goes in next. Just drop it on in there. A little more seasoning. Our smoked sausage. And this I just took right out of the freezer and I cut it up. So this is a little bit frozen. A little more seasoning. I'm gonna throw some lemons in at this point too. And then our shrimp. My shrimp are just, like I said, I peeled them and deveined them and I left the tails on. This is where we get hot and heavy with our seasoning. Just like that. I'm gonna throw the rest of our lemons in here. These, however, I'm gonna give a squeeze. I'm gonna leave the lemon pieces right in there because this will then infuse everything with that wonderful lemon flavor. And then I have a little bit, half a stick of butter, goes right on top, and we are ready. We get our lid, pop it on, make sure that our valve is shut. Fish and vegetables automatically presets to five minutes. We're gonna let it come up to pressure, cook for five minutes, the timer's gonna count down. When it's finished and it beeps at me, I'm going to release the pressure valve and do a quick release on the pressure that's inside the, um, the vessel because we don't want to wait and let that pressure come down naturally. Otherwise, your shrimp are going to turn into nasty little erasers and nobody wants to eat a tough shrimp because, ew. Uh, I'll be back when this is ready and finished and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like after we open it up. I can't wait. All right, this just came down off of pressure. I quick released it, took the lid off, and oh my goodness. You might think that putting shrimp in the pressure cooker is a bad idea but it came out perfect. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put it on a tray and then we'll show you what everything looks like after it's done. We've got some melted butter ready to go as well as some homemade cocktail sauce and dinner's ready. This was super fast and super easy. The pressure cooker, I cannot stress enough how wonderful it is to have one of these available to use any time of year but especially when it's super hot outside or when you're in a hurry because you can put something like this on the table in about an hour we're gonna go plate this up and we'll be right back 
there you have it. There is our beautiful down east North Carolina style shrimp boil and uh, we're ready for dinner and we probably don't want to waste a whole lot of time chit chatting because we want to eat. Came out this is so perfect. This shrimp came out perfect. The corn is perfect. The potatoes are perfect. The smoked sausage, even though it was frozen, is perfectly done. What I have done now is while that was cooking, I made, uh, I did some melted butter and some homemade cocktail sauce. The beautiful part here is everyone comes, serves themselves, takes what they like and leaves what they don't. And you take some of the potatoes, you crack them with your fork, you put a little bit of butter on them, you do the same with your corn, and you're ready to go. Everything in five minutes under pressure. Now remember, it took about 10 minutes for the pot to come up to pressure, five minutes to cook, and then I quick released it. So, and the shrimp is perfect. 15 well. minutes. Rick was really worried that it was going to cook too long and that it was going to be tough. Be and I would never purposefully overcook shrimp. I mean, sometimes it happens, but when you pay a lot of money for shrimp, these were actually not bad. These were $10 a pound at our fish, um, our local fishmonger, but um, these were only a dollar more. These are jumbo shrimp, by the way, and they were only a dollar more than the large shrimp. So these are about 16, 20 a pound, meaning 16 to 20 shrimp per pound. And then the large shrimp are slightly more. So you get a little bit more per pound out of those, but they're a little too small, I think, to put in the pressure cooker. So yeah, that's, that's how you do it. Um, a down east North Carolina style shrimp boil in the pressure cooker in 15 minutes flat, except for the time that it took you to prep. And really it didn't take me that long to prep at all. So there you have it. I hope that you enjoyed this. <music>